All right, so um, hello. Right now, uh, co-casting with me will be Leo. Yeah, Leo, hi. you're there. Hi, everyone. All yeah, right. Good evening. So, good evening to all our spectators right now. Um, today is September thirteenth of our uh, and um, wait, I, I forgot how many games we're in, but uh, this is the second month anniversary, I think, of our cast. Yay. And the, uh, this is the second set of games for the night. Uh, it's Team Divergence or Dive versus Team Ignis Knox or Ignis right now. So, <laughs> okay. Um, Ignis will judge our VODs, but I think they're uh, looking for our other caster, Shutters. Uh, he's supposed to try out uh, for this game right now, but uh, he's having difficulties because of rain. So we'll have to wait for that to pass, and hopefully we'll get him back uh, running soon. Okay, so um, okay, would you like to, Leo? Would you like to comment on the drafting stage right now? Oh, let's get to it. Um, dire uh, Ignis Knox is dire, and they ban Shadow Shadow Shaman. Um, Radiant is dive, and they ban Lycan and Es. What do you think about those bans? Okay, so. Pretty standard with the Shadow Shaman and Lycan. Uh, Lycan has the early game push capability and of course also has that early game Roshan capability. Can actually take down Roshan solo. Uh, a bit better than Shadow Shaman in that regard because Shadow Shaman will lose his uh, wards quickly. Whereas uh, uh, Lycan can get his wolves healed and can refresh wolves with a low cooldown. But, it's, a razor yeah. for... it's a razor pick for dive. What do you think about that? Is it okay to pick a razor yeah. at the first pick? Do you think it's worthy of a first pick? It's not really one of those game-defining uh, first picks, but razor is a solid hero. I can't go wrong with the razor. Sometimes razor is first bad, and um, it, it, it could be justifiable that the razor would be a first pick. If you can first ban razor, why not first pick razor? Razor is good in all lanes, can be a Good mid, mid laner, uh, can control almost any mid, any other mid, zone him out with the static link, drain his damage, get last hits in the nice over the other mid, denying him of experience and farm. So um, yeah, that's one thing Razor can do. Razor can also be a ganking hero, uh, get those levels in plasma field going and just start tearing away at tri lanes or um, whatever you're going up against. Maybe a solo off lane, easy easy for uh, Razor to control. So. Either way, where, wherever you want to position him, in a tri lane or a solo off lane or in the mid lane, Razor is kind of a dominating hero right now. So, okay, it's Ignis Knox. They have the back to back pick and they go with Tide Hunter. Uh, what do you think Face of Tide Hunter? Void. Okay, so uh, Tide Hunter faces Void. Where do you yeah, think Ignis I'm actually is a going big fan of it. Yeah, I'm, I'm a big fan of the Tide Hunter pick just because of Ravage. And the fact that he's so tanky with Kraken Shell is sort of broken. Same with Void. Backtrack is crazy, crazy broken. You can dodge like nukes, even ultimates like Laguna Blade if you get lucky with Backtrack procs. And they have good setup with Gush and Ravage and Chronosphere. So it's already a beginning of a big wombo combo for Ignis Knox. Yeah, so. But Divergence has this, you know, Probolus that. You could probably push them out. They should push them out before, before going and you know, before they get their combo online. I think. All right. So yeah, that's what we get from Ignis Knox. We have a uh, team fight combo with Tide Hunter and Faces Void and Divergence going a bit uh, towards the push lineup. Death Prophet, of course, a uh, key hero in the Death Ball strategy in this current meta. So uh, yeah, let's take a look at the current bands. Uh, the second stage of banning, we have Skyrath Mage and Brewmaster banned out by Divergence. And Ignis Knox bans out Pugna. Uh, and we're waiting for their fourth ban right now. So, um, what can you say about the current bans? Well, I understand the Brewmaster pick. Brewmaster is uh, an amazing tempo controller. He can shut down a lot of heroes if he gets, you know. He doesn't even have to win the lane, he just has to survive and get enough for a blink dagger. But if he dominates, he can easily crush the entire team by doing ganks with Primal Split. Because if you get Primal Split, 
earlier than the supports get their nukes up, you could just go in, thunderclap, primal split, and destroy someone. Solo kill, no problem. Alright, so what about Ignis Nox? They ban out the uh, Pugna and the uh, Enigma. I think it's a lot of hate for push strats, maybe. Because that's what uh, I think they think Radiant's gonna do. Because they need to stop uh, Radiant from pushing early so they can get their combo up. Because they need levels. Yeah, um, perfect, perfect analysis of the situation right there. So, um, okay. Ignis Nox instantaneously picks up Tinker and Divergence also replies uh, with a quick pick of Mirana. So Divergence knows already who they were going to pick. They they knew outright that Mirana was going to be the next hero. But Ignis Nox, okay, they go with the Tinker. Now, um, you might not be aware of this because maybe you didn't catch it. But uh, the last time Ignis Nox uh, played in our series, uh, Tinker was played by... Um, Daimos. Uh, Daimos is not here right now, but I, I think he just changed his name. Uh, Ignis Daimos was their Tinker player, and uh, it was a very, very great uh, Tinker player, actually. Uh, caught their opponent uh, off guard. So, yeah, Tinker is the kind of hero that you would play if you have a dedicated Tinker player. Um, kind of like Meepo and Invoker in that regard. That it's it's kind of a hero that you need to have uh, a lot of knowledge on. You can't just uh, pick Pinker, Tinker and assign him to anyone in the team. You need to have a player who's already good at playing Tinker. All right. Yeah, I also hate Tinker. I hate Tinker so much. <laughs> I think he's broken because of March. But that's just me, but yeah, I think it's going to be really hard for Radiant just because Tinker, in my opinion, is a broken hero with March. He farms so fast, even if he loses the lane, if the supports stack up for him, he can easily get that farm back with the travels. Okay, so uh, I was informed that uh, Daimus is Ignis Terror. Okay, that's their captain and Tinker would be played by Ignis Terror most likely. So, uh, yeah, I also hate playing against Tinker. Uh, the March of the Machines, uh, something uh, it's, it does magical damage, but... Something to note about March of the Machines is that it goes through magic immunity, right? Yeah, it does. So um, I think that's the worst aspect of that. No, no, BKBs don't counter the uh, Tinker's March of the Machines. Keeps you from walking up to high ground. You know, even if you have a BKB, you can't you can't really walk into a field of two or three March of the Machines stacked on top of each other. So, okay, right now we have our complete picks: uh, Razor, Death Prophet, Mirana, Trend Protector, Clockwork on Divergence, and Ignis Knox. On the dire side, Tide Hunter faces Void, Tinker, Inch, Apparition, Jakiro. Alright, so uh, an early analysis. Right now, we have a um, well rounded lineup from Divergence. They have a bit of everything a bit of split push, a bit of defense, uh, a bit of ganking, and uh, perhaps maybe a sort of latish kind of hero with Razor if they develop into that. But uh, Ignis, um, what can you say about Ignis's draft? Overall, I think they pick a lot of this meta's heroes, you know, popular heroes. I don't think that's bad, but yeah, you have to introduce the teams. Yeah, uh, for Ignis Knox, it's yeah, yeah. Row Row Robert. Uh, we just call him Robert, playing the Void. The Tinker is handled by Terror, or as you called him before with his previous name, is Dimas. Uh, for the Ancient Apparition, is Capitan. For the Leviathan, is Snack. He's eating a fish, you know, snack. Uh, <laughs> this is J Jakiro is Jingle Dongs. And I'll leave the introduction for Divergence to you. All right. So Divergence, also a re returning team. Both of these teams have played under us before. So welcome back to both teams. Divergence, reality right now with the Marana. Uh, a while ago, he was on mid. But no, he's, he's going to move to a different lane. Just going to play some wards. Uh, dive dot something. Something on the clockwork. Okay. Uh, on the offlane clockwork. Uh, Altria Pendragon. Altria on the Death Prophet going mid. And what's this? Kuhaku. Kuhaku on the Razor. Uh, Crystal Oscillator. Crystal on the Trench Protector. And Reality is going to complete their tri lane bottom. I would say. Okay, so those are our two teams. Welcome back, both of them. And to all our viewers, uh, come on, cheer them on. I, I know some of them are your friends. So, alright. 
Moving into the laning stage. Uh, yeah, it's it's a one v one versus a Crobulus and a Tinker. I think it's a fairly even matchup with the Crop having a slight advantage, but the Tinker can easily catch up with with uh, marches if the support stack. Yeah. So typically, yeah, you don't level up March of the Machines until a bit later on, because you'd want that uh, harass from the laser and maybe a few points from heat seeking mis missile uh, but yeah you start leveling up those that march of the machines when okay uh, oh, arrow. Tinker's hit. Tinker got hit by an arrow and they're trying to get him which I think they will couple of auto attacks missing oh they won't get him it's a nice laser kept him from auto attacking him yeah so uh, I think that was the fault of the Death Prophet actually. He could have killed the Tinker but got a few misses. I think it was one or two because Death Prophet was standing here uh, below yeah. the ramp. And that uphill miss chance was just enough for the Tinker to survive that perfect arrow from the Mirana. So kind of a missed opportunity but the Mirana seems again, like yeah, again. he's gonna try again. So waiting for this Tinker. Okay, we have a pause coming a pause. in. But uh, maybe the Tinker might be a bit more aware right now. But okay, so let's leave the mid alone for a while. Let's check at the other lanes. Um, how do you think the other lanes are doing right now? Oh, it's a it's a trial lane top for Ignis with the Void AA and Jakiro. It's I think it's pretty deadly trial lane for Pop because two of the heroes are ranged, and they can easily kill him if they get a chilling touch on everyone and just hit hit him to death, which I think they will do if they see him. Uh, bottom lane, it's, it's Razor solo versus... Oh, actually not solo. It's a Razor with a support uh, trend protector pulling for him versus this Tidehunter. I think the Razor has a very clear advantage in this lane, but I don't think Tide is going to suffer so much that he has to leave. Yeah, um, Razor might want to get uh, double points in Static Link to compensate for this Tidehunter. Uh, another thing we should uh, take note of is interactions between heroes, uh, especially when they're laying up against each other. Now, Tidehunter does have his Anchor Smash, re reduces damage by 60%, okay? But Razor has a Static Link. The Static Link drains uh, damage from a target hero and adds that to yourself. Uh, however, uh, you'd like to take note that the Anchor Smash damage reduction only reduces the base damage of the hero. That's the white number that you would see without, minus the, uh, without the plus sign. And static link increases the plus number that's given, the green number. So even if you reduce the base damage, the static link drain isn't affected by the 60% damage reduction of the Tide Hunter. So that's an advantage the Razor might have um, against the Tide Hunter. If, if the Tide Hunter were playing with anyone else, then the Anchor Smash can definitely uh, do a great deal of reduction in terms of uh, last hitting potential for whoever he's laning against but against the razor with the static link uh, bonus damage uh, might just be enough to compensate or even uh, go beyond compensating for that 60% loss in uh, base attack damage so okay I think uh, both teams are ready yeah bearing in mind that razor is also ranged and once he gets points maybe even just one point in unstable current he, gain, he gains a bonus move speed so tidehunter is at a sort of disadvantage in this lane but I don't think he needs to he, he he's gonna want to get a lot because all you want for an offlane tight hunter is experience to get that ravage up which I think he will because this razor isn't that big of a problem to him yeah all right so there we go Th that's how you do it that's how we do casting <laughs> uh, all right so Let's look, take a look at the top try lane. Yeah, Ancient Apparition has the right skill <laughs> up. Chilling Touch, still at level 1 though. Faceless Void has one of each, a bit of everything. Um, still can go either way. But this Jakiro has Dual Breath instead of the Ice Path. So, might be harder getting those uh, early game initiates on this Clockwork if you don't have that Ice Path. But uh, a bit of zoning coming from the Jakiro. Probably not gonna do much. Okay, so... Oh, engaging on him. Yeah, power cards, everyone has chilling touch, getting hit, auto attacks with the chilling touch bonus. Jakiro is a bit late in my opinion with hitting. Yeah. Should have gotten two attacks in and the clock should have been dead. 
Or even better. This Mirana is. Yeah. Oh, sorry. sorry. Go, go, go. This Mirana is spending a lot of time middle. Okay, so, um, yeah, uh, in that engagement, if Jakiro leveled up Ice Path instead of the Dual Breath, uh, do you think something better might have come out of uh, come out of that? Yeah, I think so. I don't think Dual Breath is worth it at all in comparison to Ice Path, just because of how badly it's been nerfed slash buffed. It changed how the hero works, Dual Breath. I don't think it's worth it as a support because Ice Path offers you so much more. Yeah, so um, that's one of the things you consider the uh, the skilling of the heroes. Y you see right away that Jakiro uh, level 1 skilled up dual breath and then followed up by liquid fire. Maybe not the best choice in uh, skill selection especially since you're going uh, on a trial lane and you want to maximize your potential to actually kill someone in the early game so uh, missed arrow here coming from the Mirana now Mirana is kind of missing out here because uh, Mirana while uh, pretty much level independent right um, can survive uh, even without too much levels but benefits greatly from those added levels getting a level 6 allows your team to move in and perform so much more um, but right now, the Ancient Apparition is going to get seen by the... Okay, uh, denied double damage. That, that, that could have been bad for the Ancient Apparition. But yeah, yeah. Um, getting the level 6 from the Mirana early on and maybe a few points in the Star Storm will allow your team to uh, just do a lot, of, uh, a lot more maneuvers, a lot more um, tricks, uh, I, I might say. You, know? uh, you, you, you could go for engagements, you could go for... Um, better sort of ganks so here on try lane um no there was a chilling touch cast but no nothing happening so kind of oh, what do you think yeah yeah what do you think of this Murana skill do you prefer a support Murana to level star storm instead of leveling arrow and just leap because i think as a support star storm is uh is too expensive mana cost it got arrow arrow hits jingle dongs cogs easy kill uh, yeah, the max battery assault is doing a lot of work for this clockwork. Yeah. <laughs> so clockwork doing well and okay, the Tinker almost died. Well, uh, nothing happened there. But the Tide Hunter died to the Razor and the Razor dove a bit right there. One hundred twelve stole damage stolen yeah. by the Razor. If you if you caught that there, so. Um, top top another arrow. This Marana is doing a lot of work with this arrow. Yeah. So. It started slow. Oh, sorry. Please continue. Please continue. Yeah, yeah. Um, good catch here at the top. Uh, I, I kind of missed that. So again, to our viewers, I'm the guy on the camera again. I'm I'm still always the guy with the camera because I have the one with the stream setup and the upload capacity to do it. I know I know it's not HD, but uh, it it's the best that we have out of everyone that has uh casting capability actually. So okay, the Mirana doing some work. Um, and here we go. An attempted. Gap, but yeah, the yep. leap's gonna get the Mirana out. So yeah, uh, you were asking if uh, the higher levels oh, still are stored. in the middle. Dogs. Uh, Carrion swarm. Easy kill. Ah, so so much work coming in from the Tinker and the Mirana. Yeah, this Clockwork is doing so much for his team. It's four and zero, and he has a lot of the assists. Uh, actually, three kills to his name. Yeah, uh, that 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 sort of thing happens when you fail to zone out uh, a tri lane. Uh, fail to zone out an off laner with your tri lane. Your tri lane is meant to, yeah, um, provide your carry with farm and experience, and make sure that the opponent's off laner doesn't get any. Especially someone as crucial as a uh, Clockwork, whose level six uh, can uh, be as disruptive to the game. Something like the Tide Hunter. Right now, the Tide Hunter isn't level six yet. Yeah. The Tide Hunter has died just only once. Hasn't been ganked by a tri lane actually, but good control coming from the Razor. Doesn't need that tri lane to do that. Uh, is accomplishing the job by himself. Uh, yeah, so this Tide Hunter, uh, even if he's just going one on one practically on lane, he's having a harder time than his Clockwork is. Because the. Uh... Okay, this, this place is wide, it's dead again. Oh. It's another good arrow. This yeah. Morana is hitting a lot of arrows. Yeah. I don't think the bottom lane was won just because of the razor. I think this is the pulse that's doing a lot of work. 
Uh, it, it kills a lot of the creeps, so Tidehunter has little experience to gain. And he's not going... He's not disrupting the pulls, so he doesn't get the pull experience. Uh, they're going in top, this clock, hit another hook, another arrow, into a cock, and easy kill again. Alright, so... This so... clock... Yeah, yeah, good spot on uh, analysis here. The Trend Protector is doing a double pull, right? Yeah. So he's doing a double pull. Ah, oh, no, not a double pull. What do you call this? A pull into another pull. So yeah, this it's a double pull, either way. It's a double pull? Okay, so yeah. even if you stack it, it's a double pull or you move it to another cap, double pull. Yeah. yeah, it's a double pull. So a double pull ensures that your creep wave is wiped out. Yeah. So, yeah, that, that, that's a, a good analysis right there. Uh, good playing by the Trend Protector and... Yeah, it's too bad that the Tide Hunter isn't contesting those pulls. He might actually get even more experience because uh, he could also take out the neutrals. But either way, yeah. Um, good place coming in from dive at all lanes. Uh, the Mirana already at the level 6 mark. Um, and the Clockwork, of course, just non-stop roaming. The Death Prophet is going to attempt to take down the mid and a <laughs> missed Ice Path right there from the hero. So they're giving a lot of farm to this tinker. He's farming a lot of these stacks right now, and they also have an ancient stack right here because of the tide hunter. But okay. the clock spots it out. I think he's gonna make a play here. This could be important if he if he lands a good hook. Oh, but he, he doesn't have vision anymore. Okay. Oh, he's still going. The clockwork is diving he's going for the tinker. Hooks in, cogs, rockets. Oh man, this clock is dominating this game. Oh, so Chrono comes in, ice path, laser from Tinker. But this clock is so tanky, he has such high levels that the skills aren't enough to kill him. Yeah, and. So it's really good play. And the Mirana ultimate, uh, just make sure that the clockwork runs back to safety. So, um. How's our other caster? Um, Shutters, are you there? Can you try speaking right now? Yeah, we're supposed to hello. be joined by Shutters. Voice quality. Hello, hello? Yeah, I think it's better. You okay? Um, is my voice sound okay? Um, better than a while ago, but uh, still kind of choppy. Uh, right now we have a boss. C can you try I saying something? Um, what do you think of the game so far? Hmm. How do I say this? They're getting dominated right now. This Mirana and the Clockwork are making absolutely crazy play. Uh, you can see here where you can tell how to map the building up. That this tower, the mid tower is still up, and the Clockwork went up here to look for the Tinker. That's how much map control they have right now. Uh, uh, I'm pretty sure this is this is nearly over for them. But not in the team, of course, in the enemy team. But as I said, you know, Dive's looking, Divergence is looking pretty good. They have this issue that we're, I, I think they have to end it by 45 minutes in because oh, Mirana DP did not kill anywhere as well as a paper vote, so, especially not in the game when they'll be having to deal with Chrono Ravage and to probably let like, three stars marking the machine. Yeah. I'm having a hard time understanding you because yeah, I'm... you're you're still uh, do you're still have you you still have a robot voice, all right? Uh, okay, so still have a boss. Um, everyone's still waiting. I, I think uh, <laughs> okay, so another disconnect. I think uh, the players also have uh, issues because of the rain. Yeah. So Philippine internet. Yeah. Philippine internet. What can we do, right? Yeah, it's all right. internet. So, um, hopefully the rain passes yeah. and everyone will have a uh, good internet connection for now. Okay, so, okay, um, yeah. can anyone, have you checked the net worth yet? Can you guys predict uh, how the net worth is yeah, going? Yeah, it's, a, it's just an, it's an uphill mm. climb for dive. I think I lost my hot key for... Yeah, it's an uphill climb for dive. <laughs> it's, five, it's more than 5,000 gold lead. And for the XP, it's it's the same story. It's more than five thousand. It's just an uphill slope, you know, for, just for dive. Because this Mirana and Clockwork has been doing a lot. Clockwork is six and zero, and dive score is seven. He's making up 
like 90% of their score with his with his ganks, his solo kills. Yeah. Um, this clockwork. I'd like to argue that if you're um, if you're playing someone like Clockwork, you have to have this kind of start because especially the like, game gets this kind of lineup where your cops just won't be get any more versus like a PP second chrono or with it obviously really really tiny. Uh, I think it's I think this is kind of start that through this is gonna be beneficial for him. Uh, much better than a two zero or where I get a team like this. That's that's really not gonna cut it. Not a big team. Alright, so Mr. Robot Vice, I, I really can't hear you. But uh, you were saying yeah. about yeah, the clockwork uh, needing to do this early on, right? Hello? You okay? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so... Hello? Yeah, yeah um... Uh, this is how, uh, when I would usually point to the audience that, yeah, Dota is a game of asymmetry. It's not always about who's leading... Um, Who's leading in the start of the game, or in the middle of the game, or at the end of the game? It's it's about uh, what you want to do with your heroes, uh, how you draft your heroes, and how you uh, execute the lineup that you drafted. Of course, Clockwork is an early game hero. It's a very good early to mid game hero, but yeah, falls off later on. So you need to accomplish much more in the early game because that's uh, where he's strongest. Whereas uh, the lineup of Ignis, they have much more. Potent late game lineup, I would say. Would you agree with uh, Faces yeah. Void and the Tide Hunter, and a uh, bit of help with the Ancient Apparition, and of course you have to deal with that Tinker. When the Tinker gets that farm, the Boots of Travel, and uh, starts uh, snowballing out of control, you know, uh, then you'll have a lot more to deal with than maybe, maybe a bit more than the what the Clockwork could handle right now. So yeah, it's a very asymmetrical game. Right now, Dive has the advantage because uh, of their heroes, yeah. Uh, Clockwork is good at what he does and he's accomplished what he needs to do. But is, is that enough? Would that be enough for to carry Dive uh, until they finish the game? Or will they start to fall off uh, when Ignis goes online? <laughs> and I, I, I hate to... to uh, bring this up uh, because Leo was actually a player a while ago right 4k70 yeah. so yeah. um yeah um <laughs> is it okay if, the, uh, if i bring up the yeah, last it's game okay. yeah so yeah, it's in, okay in the last game uh, it was k70 who was utterly dominant at the early stages of the game right so yeah yeah, yeah, yeah you you've had over a 10 kill advantage uh, i think at one point it was uh 12 or 13 kill advantage is everyone okay? Wait, they're, they're getting their, their, their voice chat back up. So thank you, Internet. So yeah, something like that. You can still come back from a 13 kill disadvantage. Thank you, Philip, Internet. If, if, you, if you, you know, uh, look at your opponent's lineup, look at your lineup and start playing around those. St start saying, okay, so we're behind. What next? Um, okay, uh, they're winning the stage. What do we do? What should we do? Uh... Yeah, you know that you're gonna lose to the Thinker early on, so uh, to the uh, Clockwork early on. So you need to um, either move away from the Thinker, uh, play a bit safer, or start moving Tide Hunter towards the Thinker because you have that level six already and you have that Faces Void. So you might want to force a team fight instead of uh, one on one engagement with the Thinker uh, with the Clockwork, because you know Clockworks. Uh, you're not gonna win. No one's gonna win one on one against a clockwork. So you might want to engage as a team instead, or you might want to avoid him altogether, and you know just focus on getting your uh, carry, your faces void, and your uh, non right to carry your tinker uh, into getting absurd levels of farm. So uh, a while ago in our previous game, um, who was playing? Yeah, Jonas with friends. They were behind. Uh, K70. Uh, K70 was arguably dominant even up to the last five minutes of the game. They were uh, still uh, ahead in gold, still ahead in EXP, uh, still winning those uh, winning head-to-head -head team fights. But uh, Jonas with friends played a bit more smartly. I I'm sorry to I'm sorry to say. Yes. Yeah, okay. So <laughs> yeah. But I yeah. actually think we really threw that game. We made a lot of mistakes with the item choices. 
and and are, are picking our times to engage. But that's a different game. This is now. Yeah, <laughs> but but the I, I, the idea is there. Uh, it's it's not always yeah. about who has the lead in the early game. Uh, it's about what what heroes you do and you set objectives and then you accomplish those objectives. So yeah, if if Ignis Knox fails to uh, get momentum on their what carries, the, yeah. it's engine apparition, battery assault, arrow. Oh my god, this clock is doing so much again. He he hasn't been killed at all. He's on a he's a big kill streak. I don't think. What do you think would be the best item to get? When you're dominating as a clockwork like this, um, I would still go for the Aganium Scepter. <laughs> you take whatever advantage you have, and yeah, you you amplify it with the Aganium Scepter. Or if not the Aganims, uh, I I've seen clockwork played with a blink before. I don't think it's such a bad idea right now. Um, but right now, uh, he's going with a blade mail. Um, not a bad choice. Right now on bottom lane, Engagement however. Coming bottom. Bit yeah. of an overcommitment by the Razor. Four man gank on Razor. Yeah. He gets destroyed. So we, we see the first kill for Ignis going on the board, and that's against the Razor. So yeah, this clockwork is going for the Blade Man. Um, let's check the item progressions of the hero so far. Mirana, pretty much okay. Uh, nothing to uh, write home about. But on the side of Ignis. The big item they should be waiting for is the Tide Hunters, the Tide Hunters blink. But right now he's sitting at uh, zero gold, zero current gold because he spent all that money this on. This Chikira is getting initiated on by the Crobolus, and he gets killed by the face boots drums crows. Maybe because this Chikira doesn't have boots at all. He's been poor because of the tower disadvantage. It, Dive has a big tower advantage right now, and so this. Crobulus already has a move speed bonus from his exorcism and he has space and drums. He just runs in and just keeps hitting the Jakiro. He gets killed. Yeah, but in the last uh, 60 seconds, we actually saw the Tinker just pick up the boots of travel. So this might be a game changer for um, for Team Ignis. Um, yeah, right on the mark. Around 12-13 minutes pick up for, for the boots of travel. So pretty okay. And we might see a change of pace in the game. Starting with those uh, Tinker Travel. Now, yeah, uh, the next major items we should keep an eye for is the Tidehunter Blink, but he, he's gonna be a bit of a way from that. Now, Faces Void, he picked up the Midas um, quite a few minutes earlier on, actually. So, yeah, this Faces Void is really aiming to f uh, act as a really late game support you know um faces void can actually start participating in team fights if he has an early mask of madness but the system gets popped they want to push middle this crobolus is heading mid they have all of the backup necessary this clock is ready arrow flies in it's the jikiro can they make a play okay so jikiro okay. is dead jikiro falls chrono comes in white comes in with the chrono Ravage, it hits two, but this, this Piranha Hide is keeping Dive safe from any more casualties. Yeah, so they, yeah, they so. don't have detection there. Uh, they have a ward here actually, a sentry ward here, so uh, they could have caught someone out there, but uh, no way to know where they're gonna move. Oh, this Tinker's dead. Oh, there might be a chance for a triple kill. Everyone's so low. Okay, a bit of an overextension, I think. Try to get the Tinker. So much hate for the Tinker, actually. They spend a lot of spells trying to kill him. But unfortunately, the arrow misses. Ice Path catches the Razor. But I think he's too fast for anyone to catch. Yeah. <laughs> so he's... They actually got the Ice Path, but it, it's a shame that they were out of position for that. But, um, yeah. Um... All in all, it was uh, an equal exchange for both parts, I think. Um, in the last minute, let's see who died. Why can't yeah, I see who died? misses. Yeah, but um, a while ago the score was 7-0, now it's 11-4. Yeah, so um, pretty even exchanges 
in the past few minutes. So let's take a look at the net worth right now. 15 minutes into the game, uh, 6,000 in favor of Dive. It actually got to that point around, um, what's this? Five minutes into the game, it was a. Uh, Arrow flies in, this is boy. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. So around five minutes into the game, six minutes into the game, the lead of Dive was actually already at around 6,000 gold. Now it's still at around 6,000, 7,000 gold. Uh, 16 minutes in so it means that the, the game is kind of stabilized and this is the kind of okay oh, clock hits the hero with the hook another uh, cog and battery missile combo easy kill for him but void comes in chrono on the death prophet laser finishes him off and that's a good return kill for ignis I think they want to to go for more because this tide is having ravage in like ten seconds. Oh, but they still engage. Void is still coming in. Oh, but I think yeah, this the fight's gonna stop. Arrow flies in, misses again. Well, right. While Razor and Trent go for bottom. Bottom tower. Okay, so they went in to defend. Uh, they, this tower is in deny range, which I think Ignis will deny. Yeah, we think they will. This clock has an is in this. Yeah, uh, looking for a solo kill. Possibly on the Tithe Hunter. If someone moves in here. Avoid oh, uh, it, got caught by Static Link. Razor is draining 200. He's hitting for 300 actually. That's death of Void. Well, Clock picks him up. Another hook goes in. He catches Ancient Apparition. Oh, that was sick. He got caught by Ice Pass. Razor still going in. I think that was a that was a overextension from the Clockwork. I think. Tinker is TPing in towards Razor. Laser march, will the march be enough? No. Razor's just too tanky at this point. Hello Shutters, are you live with us? Hello, hello, hello. You, you can talk, you can try. Uh, is your net okay right now? Uh. Not sure. Would be internet Nah. Okay. You still have that robot voice. So let's try again. Okay. Uh, you still have the robot voice. Yeah. How how's the rain, by the way? Is is it still, is still raining? Hmm. You know that whole bit of movie where it just rained days and days. Okay. Something like that. All right, so this tide this hunter is... might might get yeah. caught out right now. Leech seed invisible. Uh, I don't think they're gonna be able to do much. Arrow hits Tinker. Mm -hmm. There's a march going on. We're on a the old team, but Tinker gets a kill on the tide. I mean the trend. Clock hooks in to ensure the Tinker kill. Blade Mill gets activated. Or Macro Fire. Tide pops the Rabbit, hits 3, but they have the hide. No kills for Ignis. But this Void is coming in. Does he want to engage? No, he doesn't. So he just steps back. He receives a lot of damage from this Exorcism. I think they can make a go for him. Yeah, he's dead. Exorcism goes still move through time. Wow. So um, yeah, that was a four for nothing uh, exchange going in the way of team dive. Yeah, we see stagnation coming in earlier on. Yeah, stagnation is not what you want, especially if you're going up against the late game lineup. You know, they can recover, and uh, when they recover, it's going to be worse for you because they have yeah they have a later game lineup. But if you pad yourself to have a bigger lead, then it's going to be much harder for them to do that late game comeback, even if they have a late game lineup. So right now on top, uh, Tinker uh, moves in. 
Take your yeah. silence, but it has the blink off. Blink's out just in time. Because I think if the Crobolus had gotten the Yules on him, he would have died. Yeah, the, the Mariana was just coming in. Now the Stinker. Oh, Clock looks again. The Kiro, uh -oh. Uh -oh. same combo. Blade mail activated. And the Kiro's dead. Tinkle tries to, re to repel the bleeding, but this clock is still coming in. Oh, he didn't get a battery assault on the Tinker to cancel his TP. Yeah. Yeah, um, that's why maybe the clockwork should have gone for the Aganims instead. Well, now he's going for the Aganims, but if if he built the Aganims instead of the Blade Mail, he would have had it right now and would have had more kills because of that 12 second cooldown. Could have a secondary engagement after. Razor is in danger, getting killed, but. Goes into a blind spot and TP's away. Nice play from Razor. I think Dyer's in a really big pinch at the moment. Oh. Void comes in, Kronos. Kronos catches out the Death Prophet. Uh, he gets used and hidden. Oh, she gets away because of the Murana Hive. That's really nice play from the Murana. Picks up a regen, how lucky. Oh, bottom lane, I didn't catch that. Tide Hunter got killed by, by a Miranda. Did she hit an arrow? Uh, or it, was it, was, it was a clockwork. It was a clockwork. But either way, the dead is a dead Tide Hunter and they're going to push while the Ravage is down. But Tide is respawning in 20 seconds. So, Dark and Hole. Arrow flies in. It's nothing. I think there's getting chased by the Death Prophet. The Razor finishes up two kills with the Ancient Apparition and Jakiro. And they continue pushing mid tower. Yeah, this so is a complete domination, I think, by Dive. Yeah, so right now, take a look at the net worth. And EXP earned uh, over 16,000 right now for dive and over 12,000 EXP also for dive. So, yeah, quite of a big pinch, as you said, for <laughs> Team Ignis. Uh, it's going to be much, much harder for them to uh, stage a comeback than if, if it were uh, five minutes ago or 10 minutes ago, actually, if they managed to stem uh, the losses that they've had already. And yeah, Dive they... lineup is actually a very good Tinker counter. If you look at their heroes, they have a lot of skills that can catch Tinker out. They have Clockwork, they have the Arrow. Plasma Field can reveal areas because of the sighted gate. Yeah, I think it's very hard to put Tinker in this game, even if this Tinker player is really good. It, by the draft, they already made it difficult for the Tinker player to actually perform. Yeah, it's actually the Clockwork mostly, I would say. Uh, the rocket flare and the hook by itself yeah. is already a good tinker uh, counter. I, I think clockwork is one of the better tinker cou counters uh, in his own right. Maybe second only to Batrider. Come to think of it, Batrider wasn't picked or banned in this game. So uh, maybe. I think he yeah. fell off. Yeah, because it became uh, much harder to jungle with him because of the napalm nude. Nerf. Yeah, so uh, Batrider, what was uh, what used to be uh, an instant first banned pick, now kind of getting put into the back burner, kind of out of the spotlight recently. Yeah, uh, yeah Tinker and Void. I just like to point out that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, go ahead. Um, um, I just like to point out recently that Batrider's been seeing somewhat of a resurgence in Starlander. Um, he's been a notable offlaner since by summer, very often. And it's funny. Done really well with him. Yep. And apart from this, uh, I'm, what I'm going to be surprised is that Storks did not. I get you, uh, wait, wait, tell me what He hits a Ravage on um, two. I suppose they're going in. Overgrowth is three. Would that be enough to re-engage with this trend to buy? Chrono comes in. And gets the death prophet with a rocket. They're coming in some more. Static link on the void. With the razor pop, this ultimate. Pop smack. 
and he's fighting against three. But his damage is so high. Tinker comes in and finishes off the racer. Clock comes in with a hook, blade mail. And Tinker's dead. This Jakiro's dead as well. Well, that's a, that's a big fight for Dive to win. And I think that's a really bad fight for Ignis to lose. They only have the tide to survive on like 100 HP. So back to what you were saying. Um, um, what, are, what I was saying is, uh, when we were dating for time, uh, um, I think we forgot Storm Spirit. Like, he looks an amazing thing for counter. About the same say, clockwork of Batrider. I think even more than Batrider does it. Batrider actually has to use Firefly. Or, and, and then he has to act, and then he has to follow him into the trees and stuff, or I mean, that means going over March. Meanwhile, Storm Spirit could just fall over. He doesn't care about March of the Machines. Just go in, Tinker. The Tinker doesn't have much HP anyway. Zips right back out. Yeah, I think the reason why Storm yeah. isn't a popular Tinker counter is because he comes online later than the Tinker does. The Tinker only needs Woods of Travels, which his teammates can help him farm with the H stack. But Storm needs a couple of items to get online to be able to solo kill the Tinker. That's why I that's, think that's uh, Storm isn't such a popular Tinker, tinker counter. Oh, um, yeah, uh, I agree. Uh, good <laughs> observation there about the Star Spirit. Uh, yeah, we haven't seen too much Star Spirits lately and kind of fallen off in popularity actually. Yeah, because of the fact that he takes a, a bit more effort to come online. Maybe some changes will be made in 6.82, but until then, we can only speculate. I think the Trent almost got killed. Well, they're coming with a gush, which misses because they ran out of sentry watchmen. But I think this game is actually just dive to lose. If they make big mistakes, they might lose it, but. They have a really, really big advantage that I don't think they should lose this game. This Mirana, this support Mirana is actually transitioning into a carry. She has BKB and Ayasha. She's rich. Yeah, um, let's take a look at the net worth of everybody. Right now, only the Tinker uh, has a notable amount of farm for Team Ignis. Tinker has 11,000, while uh, everyone else for Team... Uh, Ignis is at the bottom of the charts. Uh, a sad 1,800 gold for the ancient apparition. Not even enough to buy a decent pair of boots for him. But, well, uh, yeah, he, he's got his wards. He, he's got an urn. This Jakiro, though, yeah, nothing coming out of the Jakiro, also. Gonna build into a huge crowd. But, yeah, it's, it's gonna take a while. This Tide Hunter has a blink. So, does it have the capacity to make those plays? Blink in the level 11? Uh, oh, yeah, Cobb has Scotty. Yeah, Cobb so rich, yes, what a Scotty. I think the refresher would have been better, but since she's rich, <laughs> might as well buy Scotty. Yeah, um, I, I would say that the Bloodstone or a refresher might uh, do much more because even if. Um, she's tanky as is the the chronosphere and the march of the machines can still kill the death prophet actually in the last three engagements yeah death prophet had always been the one who dies earlier on because she gets caught I think last three or two at least the last two she's died in the last two because uh, yeah the, the her HP isn't enough to compensate for the burst damage that the Tinker puts out. So maybe she should have gone for a uh, beefier build with a Bloodstone or maybe a Heart instead of a Eye of Scaly. Maybe a greedy kind of item pickup from there. So right now, yeah. yeah. Dive is picking up Roshan. I think they, they need to go for... They're gonna go to go, go get Aegis before they start doing... They're stuck time for the, the death ball push. Uh, they're no he one hesitating their... a bit. They're hesitating on yeah. the Roshan a bit. 
The one from their side is coming with the physical DPS. Yeah, this Razor is coming in. Yep, they've committed. Yep. Exorcism. Hey, look at how fast he goes down. Yeah, those ghosts do a lot of damage. How many ghosts is that? That's 21 ghosts. 21 plus... 6. That's 27 times... The well, damage of a ghost is 55, so 27 times 55. Uh, that, that's how much DPS DP is gonna have put if she concentrates the same target with exorcism. Alright, so, um, Shutters, I think your... Yeah, your, your voice is now okay. No more robot voice for you. Awesome. So, I okay, finally uh, turned into a real boy. <laughs> You're a real boy now. Uh, I think I can leave uh, the casting to you guys for now. Uh, I'll... Okay. Yeah, I'll just keep myself to handling the camera. And you guys... Take over from here. Okay, thanks. Um, if I if I could, uh, okay, okay, I'll just follow your pings, coach, so I'll know where we're looking at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can count on okay. me if I. All right. All right. Pinging out middle. I think they want to do the GG push right now. They're just pushing out all of the lanes, so it's easier for them to transition into rack in top or bottom after they do the mid push. Yeah, this clockwork is still rich though, he has 3.6k. The arrow and tide hunt, 5 second arrow, nothing's gonna come in. I'd like to note that one of Tinker, apart from Tech, is probably one of the hardest heroes to push, uh, is to push high ground on. Look at all these March of the Machines. Um, unless they get an arrow off on him, or say a really good hook from clockwork to start the fight, they're going. They're going to be here for maybe five more minutes, just trying to break high ground. Yeah, but that's all they need to do actually to win this fight. Only Tinker has decent items. This Void is not actually rich. He only has Maelstrom. Yeah, just Maelstrom and Treads. So I think they're waiting for just a good clock hook to hit and get the Tinker, and the I think they the win position. the fight. Clock, clock, looking. He's looking. Yeah, he's looking for it. Oh. Hey, hey, ulti flies. Hey, ulti in. Scanning yeah, it out. They know where the clock is. They want to just delay this push as much as they can so this Tinker gets up Dragon 5 and just start killing people on his own. I think if they, they're able to hold, they might get to that point, but it's still Dive's game to lose. They need to start pressing the issue, in my opinion. Uh, because they're gonna right lose potency. Point. What's the network difference so far? Oh! Big arrow on Void. Arrow, no, arrow hits Void. No, oh, they disengage, they disengage. They don't, they don't want to go in. Both Ravage and Chrono are up. They need to bait both of them out. Otherwise, they're gonna be fighting <laughs> into what is possibly 8 seconds of hard CC. Yeah. This is not something you want to be sitting at while March of the Machines is up. Yeah, going back to what you said, the difference in network is more than 20,000. Yeah. Different in oh. XP is the same story. So EXO gets popped and they go for the GG push. Oh, Chrono, Chrono comes goes in. up. AA. They go in to concentrate on DP. Burst out. 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 Razor is chasing out. Void is so close. Buybacks from absolutely everybody. This Razor is still alive, bro. He has to move or else he's gonna get caught out. He can't afford to die. Oh, I think yes, he can. He has ages, Oh, I didn't notice. Hey, just that's a good call. Ultra cut. Yeah, I'm better on the corner. Okay. Oh, rampage, rampage on the Razor. Razor. Oh, this is gonna be a double rampage. There's no way he's gonna get out of this oh, one. Cool. Double rampage. And we have that rampage where it's stuck on the screen. Oh, never mind. Looks like that. I'll fix that. Are they pushing me? Millie barracks is up. Oh, Tinker picks off Mirana. Razor's hand use any? Oh, but he can't do anything. Not with this Tinker. I so, in that. In yes? Yeah, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. So, in that entire fight, all they got was this. The range tracks. It's not even the important one. It's not this one. Would you consider that a win for the Dyer? When they've yeah. been forced over that. 
Yeah, I think that's the best fight for Ignis to take because they got the Death Prophet as the fight started. They didn't have the exo Exorcism Ghosts wailing on them, so they were able to kill a lot of the Radiant heroes. But even then, they lost a tower and a rat. That's true. Oh, but hits ancient oh, him, Appa is going down. There is no way he's going to survive this one. Okay, they've lost their Appa. They've got 30 seconds in to fight a 4v5. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm on his down. That's going Lock to be a 20 second ago. Yeah, this clock hook cools down so fast, it's a hook after hook, you know, 12 seconds. Look at this DP Stoggy. What do you think about that item choice? Versus I think it's just the... Uh, bloodstone? Or heart? Yeah, bloodstone or refresher maybe. This oh, guy um, is just a for fun pickup, I think. Refresher doesn't actually, like, give you double ghosts. So you can just, like... Uh, oh, it's super long ghost duration if you got a refresher up. No, I think it's the pickup for the refresher is because you want to have exorcism after you just use the exorcism. You don't want to have the Hold on, we a big team fight right now. Chrono goes up and only catches the DP. Oh, it only also catches the laser. They're also in this right now. Ravage goes down. Copper Go hooks in. Boy goes down. This is double stack of March of the Machine, the Razor is going nuts, he's got a Reaver up, he's so tanky, DK is up, nothing can stop him, Jingle Bombs is dead, possibly, oh he has to back off. They've fought another exchange, one for three, and a mid wrap. They got what they came for, although I really wouldn't be surprised if they came going for it. Oh, E-Blade is up on Tinker right now though. He can actually stop the auto attack. Ooh. In so close. Oh, Ooh, the clock is the hook. This Tinker is trying to do his best to just stop this push. He's trying. He's trying. This is going to be, be really, hey, really hard with this one. Oh, I hear hook. Nope. No hook going. Josh comes on Razor. Razor is low. Is he gonna pop? Oh, I think right he's... No, he's, he's not, he's not. Not with an Aghanims. Not without an Aghanims. Picking out Roshan oh, again. Things are going... But Roshan's not up yet. He's just farming the jungle right now. Oh, he, he need, Razor needs to finish his heart. He can't keep going into fights like that. So this this Tinker actually is the only one with net worth comparable to Radiant side. Is there uh, only I hope? I suppose it's due to the nature of Tinker, where he's sort of like a he's sort of like a black hole of farm. Like yeah, he's he's, he'll just take farm. he'll just take each lane, and then you'll just be sort of relying on him, sort of to. Carry your whole game. Ah, oh, carry your whole team on his shoulders. Yeah, but with a lineup like this from Dive, he just push you straight up. Just Even straight if one up. of them dies, yeah. they still have another hero with the push capacity. If Razor dies, Death Prophet still has Exorcism. If Death Prophet dies, Razor is still there to push with his ultimate. Now, Roshan's up, That's I true. think they're gonna go for And both of them are so tanky. It's gonna be almost impossible to bring both of them down at the same time. Not unless... No, he has a heart up. This Razor is not dying anytime soon. Not with a heart in BKB. This clock is oh. waiting. Or clock is tink waiting. Yep. No, for clock. Tinker. Sorry. He's just staying there, look. <laughs> He's ready. You have to be patient. That's the way it's fine for him. Meanwhile... Oh, look at these. These two tanky folks just wailing the crap out of this lotion. So they can stop. This does mean, however, that they... That unless they have like... No, 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 she doesn't have a refresher. They're gonna have to wait a bit. No, they won't fight without the ghosts. I don't feel like they're confident enough to do it just yet. Maybe if they hit a good arrow? Oh, this Jakiro? Oh, oh, arrow misses. 
Oh, it's oh, Shakiro. Oh, they're still head in a hook. Oh, they are going to push. Through the ghost, they says. Ravage goes down. Oh, DP is actually going to go down here. Oh, DP. Oh, so DP has the Aegis. Aegis is gone. Razor. Razor is just beating up on the side hunter. And are they going to take this tower? Clock is going for AA. Oh, oh no chrono. He just did. No chrono. He jumped in without a chrono. Are they going to still going to go for this tower? No? I think they should. Okay, they're just flicking away at it, you know, the we'll ghost yet. Can't wait on it. Just gonna flick away with what they can. Oh, no, that's a bit of miscommunication there from the DP and the Milan. Oh, this Jingle Bombs is gonna go down anyway. So hard. Razor just moves so fast. He's just beating up on everybody right now. Tinker's actually got away. Yeah, he bled. He bled on himself oh. twice. Oh, they're not gonna care. This Razor. This Razor is just really, really strong right now. 3.5k HP. He's got a hard up. He's got a BKB. Tinker can't mess with him. He can, however, apparently kill the DP. Oh, he's in big trouble now. He doesn't have blink yet. Not another few seconds. And oh, it's cancelled. And he's gonna take away. Oh, taken out. Yeah, I think it's GG. I think they should call it actually. <laughs> There's no oh, way there they're coming there back. There is very, very little way they're gonna come back from this. Not oh, unless like... So not unless like say all five of them decide to walk into the tower and then stay there as Razor tanks the fountain. Oh, walk into the fountain. Razor tanks it for like five minutes. It's so freaking fat. Yeah, nothing's gonna kill this Razor in my opinion, because this Void didn't actually get the farm he needed to win this game, to carry his team. He's so under farm for a safe lane carry Void, because the Tinker stole all of his farm. But it's it's in general oh, because of... Okay. Oh, okay. Just, just a hive. Oh, Razor. Oh, GG's called by Ignis Knox. And we have our first winners of tonight to be Divergent Gaming. Absolute beastly play from them tonight. Yeah, it was really nice play from them. They knew what they needed to do. And they did it with their heroes. That's true. They... Hmm. I need to see the draft again, just to be sure. But I think they did an excellent job in... Uh, and how they played through early in the mid game. So they had, le this was a clear advantage from the start. The clockwork just having perfect hooks. And the, Mir and the Mirana just landing arrow after arrow, especially on that top lane. Poor Jakiro. They had really opened up the game for them to win. They created enough space for the uh, Death Prophet to start pushing towers middle. And then Razor got his items up, and the rest is history. All right, so that's uh, Divergence victory, convincing win for the first game, dominated the early game, and um, just took the game from there on out. Continued up until the game ended.